Hi friends, welcome back to Getmatic Educations. So in the lecture number 15, we started the root locus, right? In the root local, we discussed about how to proceed for the closed loop system stability. In the root locus, we'll consider the open loop transfer function. It means we'll always deal with GS HS. Okay. And if your HS is one, then I'll use GS directly. This is the open loop transfer function. Okay. Now we have seen the value of k for the k equal to zero. The closed loop poles equal to the open loop poles. Isn't it? And for k equal to infinity, your closed loop poles is nothing but your open loop zeros. Correct? Means if you move from k equal to zero to infinity, means you are considering your closed loop poles only isn't it so today we'll start our session with the angle and magnitude condition for the root locus okay angle and magnitude condition friends as we discussed earlier in the root locus inside of it we are discussing the closed loop system isn't it this is the characteristic equation 1 plus GSHS equal to 0. Though we are considering the open loop transfer function that is GSHS, but indirectly we are studying the closed loop stability only. Correct friends? So if you will take GSHS from this equation, I will take this one to this side, so it will be minus 1. So, what we are going to do, we are discussing GSHS, isn't it? Can I write this minus 1 plus J0? Okay. So, what is the angle and magnitude condition actually? If I will take the magnitude of this GSHS, take the magnitude of this. Means magnitude of minus 1 plus J0. Okay. So, magnitude of this term is nothing but 1. Okay. So, means... If your root locus or your system is satisfying the root locus concept, the magnitude of that particular system should be 1. Why? Because this is the condition for closed loop stability for the negative feedback. This transfer function is given for the negative feedback. Okay. So here we are considering only negative feedback. If we will talk about the positive feedback, Later, we'll discuss what is the condition. Okay. Now, let's come over here. If you'll find out the angle, this is the magnitude, no problem at all. Let me write over here. This is the magnitude. Correct. Now, let's take the angle. Find, find out the angle for this G of S, H of S. Okay. Correct. So, this will be 10 inverse. B by A, this is the imaginary term over here and that is 10 inverse minus uh, 0 by 1. Why this minus? Because of this real part is minus 1. So what you are getting? You are getting over here. It's a kind of or uh, directly you can take this is the 180 degree. Isn't it? 10, 180 degree is nothing but you will get in minus. Correct? So here your angle should be 180 degree, your magnitude should be 1, then only your system will satisfy the root locus concept. Isn't it? So this root locus where we are using the negative feedback, we call the direct root locus. Direct root locus. Okay. And instead of this, if you will consider the positive feedback, this is the positive feedback condition. In the positive feedback condition, definitely the characteristic equation 1 minus g of s h of s equal to 0. Here also the magnitude will be 1, no problem at all, but your angle will be 0 over here. For this particular thing, if you find out the magnitude, it will be 1, but your angle for this particular 1 will be 0, 0 degree. Because of this minus, we are getting over here 180. So, this we call the inverse root locus. This concept is inverse 
root locus. So, for the gate point of view, we are not going to discuss this positive feedback system because till now we got the questions from this one only, isn't it? So, this is the direct root locus, I can call it, this is 180 degree rules. This is the indirect root locus, okay? Let me write indirect root locus and this is zero degree rule. Okay, friends. So, if your system will satisfy it or your equation will satisfy this two condition that magnitude should be one and I'm sorry, this is magnitude like this and your angle should be 180 degree or the multiple of 180 degree. So, can I write 2q plus 1 into 180 degree? Here, the q values are 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay, friends. So, your angle should be multiply of this 180 degree and your magnitude should be 1. Okay. So, in this question, we will see the use of it. The question is, find the system gain at the rate a is equal to minus 4 plus 4j to the given system. This is the system given. So, what we will what we'll do over here, first we will check the angle condition. Angle condition at the given point over here, the given point is minus 4 plus 4j. Okay. If your angle will satisfy the condition that your angle is multiplier of 180 degree, multiplier of this, it means it will satisfy the angle condition of the root locus. Okay. So, if angle condition will satisfy it, then, then magnitude condition will also satisfy. Magnitude will be 1. So, the first condition is the angle condition. If your system satisfy the angle condition, definitely the magnitude will be 1. Okay. So, for this particular one, first we will find whether the angle condition is satisfied or not. If satisfied, then we will find out the magnitude and we will equate to the 1. So, we will get the k value over here. Let us find out the angle condition, gs. It will be 0 over here minus 10 inverse 0 for this is and minus 10 inverse over here omega by 8. Isn't it? So, so instead of this, before that I have to put this. Okay. So, wait a minute. Let me correct myself. First, I will put the values means at a particular point they are asking and the point is given is equal to minus 4 plus 4. Okay. So, I will keep over here it will be minus 4 plus 4 j. Okay. In denominator minus 4 plus 4 j plus it is 8. Correct. So, finally your open loop transfer function is minus 4 plus 4 j and it will be 4 plus 4 j. Isn't it? Now, we will find out the angle. So, angle of numerator is 0. In denominator, the angle is, I will write over here, minus and then 10 inverse 4 by minus 4, okay, plus 10 inverse over here 4 plus 4 directly. Okay. You know very well how to find out the angle if A plus JB is given. So, what is the angle of this? The angle of this is 10 inverse B by A. Okay. And one more thing. If, if you have angles like uh, theta 1, angle theta 2, angle theta 3. So, you can add them. Theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. If they are in multiplication. Okay. If they are in division, so you can subtract them. If you have like this, so you can write theta 1 minus theta 2. So, this is numerator over here, angle is 0. And over here, these are the angles. Two angles I am getting, this is theta 1. Over here, I am getting theta 2. So, that is why I am adding, because they are in multiplication. I am adding. And why I am subtracting? 
because these two are if the this is theta 0 this theta 0 and this they are in division so I am subtracting these two things from the theta 0 correct so if you will find out this minus sign will be out this will be 135 and uh, this one will be uh, 45 correct so finally you are getting minus of 180 degree so this is one is satisfying the angle condition angle condition will contain both plus minus 180 degrees and a multiplier of them okay friends so angle condition is satisfied for this question now the magnitude condition will be surely will be satisfied okay so let's find out the magnitude of this particular one the magnitude of given system is k divide by over here 4 square plus 4 square it's 32 over here also 4 square plus 4 square it's a 32 so finally you have k 32 and you can equate it with 1 so k equal to 32 we are getting over here isn't it so this is the answer now let's come to the construction rules the first rule is the root locus is always symmetrical about the real axis always symmetrical you can see over here I have chosen three different questions when you will draw the root locus diagram we will get the output like this this is the real axis and it will be symmetrical okay you can check to this one this is also symmetrical and this is also so always we'll get the symmetrical about the real axis this is the first point okay now let's come to the point number two the number of loci you can say it loci also so the number of loci means rl branches okay let me take over here highlighter so it will be clear to you number of rl wait this is the number of rl branches okay so let's consider it this is the rl branches written over here so number of loci depends on number of poles and zeros if in your system poles are greater than your zeros it means your number of loci will be equal to number of poles okay if you have three poles and two zeros so total number of loci you will get three equal to number of poles okay and this is the second one case two if your zeros are greater than poles then number of loci will be equal to z okay let's come to the third one so here is the third one the real axis loci or the rl branches how to find this one okay so a point exists on rl branch if the sum of poles and zeros to the right hand of that point should be odd but this point pulled means number of poles over here for this system the poles are a is equal to 0 a is equal to minus 1 a is equal to minus 2 so over here it's 0 minus 1 and this is 2 minus 2 okay now we'll check whether this point exists on the rl branches or not what is the rl branch root locus for the particular system for this system we'll draw the root locus diagram correct so we'll check this point is coming into the rl branch or not and that is the real axis loci okay so how to check it suppose i'm considering this point so i'll look to the right hand side of this point if your number of poles or zeros whatever are odd then that point will be definitely on the real axis loci okay so over here nothing is there now let's come to the point number two this is the point pole two that is minus one we are looking to the right hand side of this we are getting only one one is odd number so in between them we have root loci this is the real axis root loci in between them we will get definitely one root loci okay what about this for this point we'll come to over here and then we'll check to the right hand side of it we are getting two poles so definitely in between these two 
we do not have any root loci over here. No root loci over here. Okay, friends. So, like this, we'll find the root loci on the real axis, means RL branches I'm talking about. Okay. So, here is one question given. Sorry for this dog, dog barking. Okay. So, the question is given GS, HS, K, S plus 1, S plus 3 and all these poles and zeros are given. What we have to do? We have to identify sections of real axis which belongs to RL, means root locus. So, first we will take the points over here. This is the pole given S equal to 0. Then we are getting S equal to 1, that is 0. So, 0 by this circle minus 1. Then, at s equal to minus 2, we are getting pole. Then, s equal to minus 3, we are getting 0. Then, s equal to minus 5, we are getting pole. So, these are the points. Points related to the given this system. Now, we will find out the number of loci. Okay. So, we will see over here, no poles or no points are given. Let's come over here, number of points are 1, that is odd, so definitely in between them we will get number of, or we will get the RL branch. Over here I will get the RL branch, okay. What about this point number 2? I will come over here, I will check to the right of this, I am getting 2 points, so there is the no RL, RL branch between these 2 points, okay. I will come over here, now if I will take... Uh, into the RHS, I am getting 3 points, so definitely I will get another RL over here in between them. I will come over here, I will come over here and when I will check in the RHS, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 points, so I do not have RL over here and 1 is at infinity also. Okay, why at infinity? I will tell you later. If you will check at the infinity, you are getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, definitely between infinity and s equal to minus 5, we are getting 1 RL. Okay. So, the question is, why I am taking this at infinity? In this question, if you will observe, you have number of poles equal to 3, number of zeros equal to 2. And for the root local, the foremost condition is the number of poles should be equal to number of zeros means this is the proper transfer function okay let me write over here the transfer function should be proper okay so what if your zeros are not equal to your poles so the remaining zero will consider at infinity if you have three poles and two zeros so remaining one i'll consider at infinity at infinity. So, this condition should be satisfied always. Okay, friends, over here in the last question also, one root locus branch will be there also, here. Because at infinity, for this particular one, I have only three poles. Poles are three, so three zeros will be there on the infinity. So, I am going there and I am considering I am getting three points so definitely between infinity and this point i'll get one rl branch for sure so friends this is all about today's class in the next class we'll discuss some more rules then we'll switch to the fundamental problem problems related to the real axis i'm really sorry for this dog barking we'll meet in the next lecture please subscribe the lgf and you can come to our facebook group for the doubt solving We'll meet in the next till then. Take care and bye.